So uh, I'm going to start off just by some introductory comments. This is uh, we're going to look at the different ways that uh, instructors use uh, the campus here, NOAA's campus in Second Life. Just a brief history on myself. Um, I came into Second Life in uh, 2010 and started actually managing this campus in 2012. We didn't really have any activities here then. We now have 23. It would take a better part of a full day to visit all 23 of those. So we're only going to look about four activities. Now, if we have time, we can actually look at a fifth one, but usually I have found that four activities um, fills every, uh, takes up all our time. So we're going to look at three activities. Um, this is briefly my history here. So in the past, tours, I, this is probably about the fifth tour I've given for NOVA, but in the past we focused on seeing new activities. What, what have we added recently? It's, um, it's always kind of fun. We haven't added anything in a few years now. So what I want to focus on more is how do we uh, use these different activities. We have different ways we use these activities, and we're going to look at four different ways we use them. So each of the activities we're going to be visiting is used in a different way. Um, some are models, some are other things, but we'll see how we use these uh, when we have a look at it. So. Um, You'll see here, these are the four types of uses we're going to look at. One's exploring models. Uh, the model we're going to look at is the Grand Canyon. Exam and view uh, and quiz reviews. Exam and quiz reviews. Um, something I didn't think would be that popular in Second Life, but it's one of our most used activities here. Interactive activities where students actually engage with an object, they touch things and things change and stuff like that. Um, that's what we have the most of really. Um, most of our activities we have are interactive activities. But then student posters where students make a poster, it gets posted up here. Um, and students read these posters and answer some questions and stuff. So four different ways we're using these activities. Um, and this is uh, what we're going to be exploring today. So this is the model activity we're going to look at. It's the Grand Canyon. Uh, we'll talk more about it when we get up to the Grand Canyon. It's on a platform way high in the sky. So students explore the different strata as they descend the canyon wall. So we're 11 strata here on this canyon. And that we're going to be looking at that, and you'll have a chance to explore how students look at that. These are the anatomy and physiology slides. Students use these to study for exams. Um, and so it's it's kind of like a PowerPoint presentation that they have there. They could probably do this with PowerPoints uh, provided to them by the professor. But they're all here, and, and they come in and um, use these to study, mainly for exams and quizzes. This is the interactive dis uh, activity we'll look at. It's a display of double fertilization plants, but there's two other interactive activities there in that same thing with the plants. And we'll look at all three of those, and you can see how those work and how students interact with that. And the fourth one, we're going to look at the posters, the so student posters. The students create their poster and share it with the class. This is quite popular. Uh, we've had, um, the last two weeks, we've had lots of students coming in looking at these posters. So um, we're up about 135 students so far for this semester using this campus. It's about average for fall. We get more in the winter or spring semester than we do in the fall semester because of closures due to snow and stuff at the Nova campus and students are sent in to do activities here. So we're about average for fall, about 130. And so and most of these have been looking at the uh, posters here and also at that anatomy and physiology slides, um, which I always think it's interesting that students want to do that in Second Life. A couple of things to do before we go. I'll touch the board to 
the right to join the Nova Tours, your right, not mine, um, underneath the, the web page there. I touch that. Uh, you're going to, and you touch that, you'll see um, in nearby chat, you'll see a thing where you can touch uh, Nova Tours. Touching that nearby chat brings up a window for that group and just say join the group. I will remove you from that group after the tour. And we try to keep that group pretty much empty. And when we do a tour, we put people in. This will allow me to talk to you wherever you are on the region, on the campus here, using um, the Nova Tour chat. So I can send, not talk to you voice, but I can talk to you. I can send you emails and stuff to everybody. Because some of you will be out of range. Uh, tours are like that, especially when you're looking at a large canyon wall or uh, different things we'll be looking at that people can walk around and explore. Um, I will be able to communicate with everybody if you're in the tour group. The other thing you want to do is be sure you touch the um, poster to your left, my right, uh, underneath the slide board there. And you're going to get um, a note card, and that, that note card contains the landmarks to every place we're going. So um, you should have, I think there's six landmarks there. First one's for the classroom, you're already here. Um, but we'll be going to the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is also a landmark for the Grand Canyon to get there. Then there's a grand landmark to get to the top of the canyon. We kind of start the tour going down. We'll do that eventually. Then there's a landmark to go to the A&P um, anatomy and physiology area. There's a landmark to go to the plant science area, and a landmark to go to the posters. Um, that way you don't have to try to figure out how to get to these places. They're going to be um, there and then easily to get to. Once you get, you teleport in there, please move quickly because there's going to be people coming on top of you. Um, and so sitting around there is not going to be the best thing to do. So have those um, landmarks, uh, be in the tour group. Let's see, is there anything else here? Um, there's my contact information. Um, you're Feel free to contact me uh, if you have further questions. Um, I'm happy to talk to people about campus. I, I, and uh, we have lots of visitors here. So they'll come in and visit, see what you want to do here. A um, few more things before we head out. Uh, let me pull up some. Um, because we're being filmed, uh, please, uh, please uh, use chat. Don't use voice yourself. I'll be talking in voice, but uh, if you're using voice, it starts to mess up the filming. So if you want to talk uh, to me, you know, chat uh, works fine, um, but uh, don't use voice in the group or it messes up the filming. So just a, a note on that. Let's see. Is uh, how we're doing it for vo how many people can't hear me? Let's pull that up and get an idea. Just get, now if you can't hear me, just say something, so hopefully. No, his, his tagline's typing. Can't, maybe tagline can't hear me. I don't know. Oh, some people are still coming in, it looks like, also. Okay. Um, let's move up to the Grand Canyon. Uh, What is Shiloh trying to get? So when you touch on the panel to your right, go to uh, nearby chat and it will say Nova Tours. There'll be a little thing that says Nova Tours there. Click on that. And then a uh, menu appears on your screen, basically the, uh, about, the, um, about the group. 
And then about halfway down on the right side of that menu, you're gonna or that box, you're gonna see it says join group, and then you'll be in the group. So if you're having trouble with that, I'm gonna go to the group also. Um, and I'll send a chat out to everybody. Let's see. I'm sending out a chat there to everybody, group chat. Hopefully you're seeing that. And feel free to talk back in group chat to me. Um, everybody will see that and it doesn't matter where you are on the... Uh, doesn't matter where you are on the, on the campus, uh, you should be able to get the group chat uh, in there. Is anybody not seeing the group chat? When you have the group on, click on chat. There's one of the options within the group once you've got it loaded there is chat. So make sure then you'll be receiving the chat. So click on that, activate it, then under, when you click on it, there's a thing that says chat. One of the options is chat. Make sure that chat is open, and then you'll be in there. Okay, great. Looks like Chant got in there. Dave's in there. Yay. Okay. Um, we can... Uh, Get up to the Grand Canyon. So please go up to the Grand Canyon with me. Um, located location two on your note card. Okay, do we have most people here? Let me see. Um, there's still a few down below. I'll teleport them up. <laughs> I can, let's see, we got. I think there's only one more down there. Okay, I think everybody's here. Um, so this is the Grand Canyon activity. It's uh, was built by um, Misty, a builder, a friend of mine who's a builder with funds from the Nova Foundation grant. So we got money to do this. Um, and it's useful to look at for small funds like that. I think we got a $3,000 grant um, and Misty was able to uh, go ahead and build this and several other things she worked on. So she did a lot of work for us for $3,000. Um, for those of you who don't know it, the Grand Canyon is a, uh, very large and deep canyon in the Western United States. It runs many miles. Um, what we have been able to do is uh, recreate a small section of that, of the Kaibab area. And uh, this is what we've done here. So that students, most of our students at the Nova are in Virginia on the East Coast of the United States, where this canyon is a lot further away. And so, 
it's going to be um, different for them and they never get out here to see this. And so we recreated this um, as part of for geology classes and for an environmental science class that used this. Um, it's not being used currently. I haven't seen any students up here, but I'm encouraging some geology professors to try to come back in here and use it and see what we can do with this. So uh, we're trying to uh, get this up and going again. There are 11 strata here laid down from 525 million years ago to 200 uh, and 70 million years ago. So they started almost, you know, um, half a billion years ago, basically uh, making uh, the strata and it worked its way up. The very top is only about 270 million years old. Um, and for each mo model and interactive activity we have at NOVA, there's a student handout. And students get the handout from their professor as a Word document. And so for here, we have the Word document available for you. If you pick on that orange sign behind you, you will see that there is, it says right click and select touch for activity handout. You can see the handout that the students get. Um, they get it as a Word document from their professor. Um, and so like we post it on Blackboard for all their students in the class and they can come in and use that handout to do this activity. It's going to guide them through what they should do here, and it ends up giving them some um, questions that they uh, then need to go ahead and answer and turn in for a grade. So there's the handout. The first thing that the handout does is ask them to go over and look at these signs. Um, and so you're gonna follow these red arrows. Let's go over there. What we have here is a, a very nice picture of the Grand Canyon. You can see what the canyon looks like in real life. Um, and then you can see information about the strata. There's 11 different strata at the cab section of the Grand Canyon. So we're gonna the students will then look at those strata and look at the study that a bit, get a feel for the, the thickness of those strata, get a feel for the age when these strata were laid down, um, get a feel for the names. You can see the Kayab is at the very top and then they go down um, and going down and answering questions about these. They can then this other one over here gives them more different information about the, the, the period, uh, geological period when they were laid down and these sorts of things um, and gives you a uh, feet, sort of a, a, a bar there that you can kind of compare the height. Um, the canyon drops, you know, about 4,000 feet, uh, uh, 1,200 meters. It's quite a drop. Uh, it's, it's a good long hike to get down there and it's a much harder hike to get back up. It's, it's pretty steep. So um, you can go to it's a, a national park in the United States, the Grand Canyon National Park. You can go and visit, you can go down, you can hike down. I think you can take helicopter rides down. I think there are mule rides down. There's many ways to visit this park and see this. But for our students, it was an idea if they're in a geology class, they can get out and look at this amazing geological structure. Um, and uh, one that they'll probably not see for a long time until they actually you know, take a vacation to that area or something. It's a pretty remote area. So it's not, it's a kind of a flyover state. You're going to Los Angeles or something like that from Virginia, you might fly over it, but to stop and see it, you really have to make an effort. So once they've done that, once they've looked at these posters, um, it's going to ask them to go back um, to the other side of that, uh, of this platform. And on the way back there, what they're going to do is they're going to look at some fossils. Get an idea in the, in the handout, ask them about some of the fossils there. So let's go back, follow these red arrows. Um, and you come over here and we get some types of fossils just to give them an idea what fossils are like. Um, they can see a plant, an insect, a clam, 
these sorts of things with the fossils there. And uh, at the very end of that last red arrow drops them off at a teleport site, the teleport up to the top. So open up your note card. Hopefully you've kept it there, minimized it, the one you got down below. Open that up and go to uh, Nova Grand Canyon top. We all want to go up to the top. I'll meet you up there at the top. The students at this point would be going up to the top of the Grand Canyon. But we'll do that also and, and go up there. And for those who don't have that, we'll try to get you up there in a second. So I'll meet you up at the top. So I think we got everybody's just got a teleport up here. Okay, so this is the top. Um, come out on the glass structure if you want. Uh, to my left, just come out straight there. Gives you a view of the Grand Canyon. Um, you can look out there. Um, we've had students who are afraid to walk out there. And even though it's second life, they have a height issue. Um, they have a structure like this at the Grand Canyon is why we recreated it. Um, and it allows you to look down the face of the canyon, which is kind of nice to do. And you can see the different strata there. We struggled with how to get students down these sharp walls. These are uh, very steep walls here. Um, and so how do you walk down this? There's a trail at the Grand Canyon. The real Grand Canyon has a trail. We couldn't do that because students would just fall off it. We put steps in and students still fell off it. So you can go down these steps, but there's transparent walls all around you so that you do not um, fall off these stairs. It was a big issue trying to keep it so people did not fall because you guys know how to fly and how to move around, but people who are brand new, like students, when they come in, uh, falling off of this is kind of dramatic for them. And so we try to avoid that. So what we're going to do now is um, go, down to the, go down the steps to the first platform. Um, and each platform has a note card available with it. And what we're going to do, you can see how that works for you. So we'll go down to this first platform here. There's, so they see a sign that says, uh, hey, Bob, for, uh, formation, click on that and you'll get a note card that describes the geology of this structure. And it's going to, um, give you some images of the fossils associated with this structure. Um, people always wonder why there are no dinosaur fossils. Well, there weren't dinosaurs 270 million years ago. And so uh, there weren't any in this area. And it wasn't the dinosaur idea. So um, these are before the dinosaurs. So mainly invertebrates were seen in this structure. Um, and so this is the, how each of these 11 strata, they have a sign like this. So the students would descend the wall, look at each of these 11 strata, get information from the note cards, see the fossils associated with that strata, and then they're answering the questions in the back of that handout. This is how a professor would use this. 
The students would then send those uh, answers to their professor for a grade. The professor does never needs to come into the um, to the Second Life. The students do, um, and then uh, they, they've experienced the Grand Canyon. Uh, the students living in Virginia who will probably never see the Grand Canyon. Many of them, uh, I've actually got to know the Grand Canyon a little bit, know the Levin Strata at least in the Kaibab uh, area of the wall and uh, got a feel for this. Now you can walk on down. This is a very steep first one. So what we have here, we, had, we couldn't put stairs in. We tried, we struggled, we figured out how we could do this. We couldn't do it. So what we have here is a ladder. And so you, you click the top of that ladder, you'll see a ball, there's a ball there. I touch that ball and I climb on down the ladder. Um, the handout tells students to do that, but uh, you can just jump down too if you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, come on down and you'll see our second strata here. And it's the same idea that you climb up, you climb down or just jump down if you want. The idea is just to get down to this platform. Usually the students do this uh, one or two students at a time so they don't have a huge group around and uh, you get an idea how this looks. So this is uh, the note card for the next strata. And you just follow, the students are just follow the red arrows. And eventually you end up at the bottom. So I'm gonna give you some freedom to look around, um, fly around, walk down the stairs if you want, or you can fly around and look at the strata, uh, look at some of the note cards just to get a feel for how uh, this works. Um, So feel free to walk around the canyon uh, or fly around it, do what you want. We'll meet at the bottom. So I'll meet you guys uh, down there at the bottom. Um, and then we'll go to the next location after that. You can also use your teleport to get down there. So on the same note card we have at the bottom. So you can get down there just like you They just said this is too hard for their students, but now anybody can do it. But you don't fall off the stairs anymore. Okay, we're getting numbers here.
um, students in anatomy and physiology classes to review for exams and quizzes. Um, and frankly, I did not think that, that this would be very popularly used. I, I thought nobody would want to do this in Second Life. Um, but it turns out this is one of the most widely, highly used areas. There's a whole bunch of students, about 20, that spent a lot of time up here this semester reviewing for activities, uh, for exams and quizzes. Um, and this activity, which is basically like looking at a PowerPoint presentation, um, allows them to do that. So I was extremely surprised that this was that popular, um, but it is. Um, so when I first came to NOVA, they wouldn't let me build at NOVA. Um, the, the state manager didn't want me messing around there doing anything. And so um, another community college in Virginia um, invited me to build on a parcel at their land. And I went over, it's called Tidewater Community College. And one of the people there, uh, um, Michael Mitchell, uh, had this build inside of a castle. He had this ex uh, A&P exam review build inside of a castle there. Um, the different floors had different um, slide presentation areas. Um, it was pretty dark and dreary inside the castle, but uh, students were using it. And in um, 2012, they lost that. They lost their um, region in Second Life. You know, that was the time the many universities and colleges left. And so Michael didn't have a place to do this. And sometime around um, the end of uh, 2014, Michael uh, came back here and uh, in, I invited him to go ahead and build here if he wanted to. And so we've built this much more open format. It's not the dreary castle that we have there. But uh, you can see we recreated that. I thought, OK, we'll put this here. No one's going to use it, but what the heck, we have it. But then it's been heavily used ever since. And, I, and this is totally voluntary. Students do not get a grade for coming up here and doing this. This is totally voluntary. But Man, they are up here almost all the time. Um, and so it's, a, it's really quite useful to the students. And I think that's really neat. Now, NOVA, I cannot get the NOVA A&P Anatomy and Physiology faculty to send students up here and use this. But Michael's students use it a lot. So we get his whole class, more or less, is up here um, using this every semester. And so it's, it's quite popular. Let's go over to area two. Um, the, there's 14 areas here. And we'll look at uh, what we see over in area two, just to give you an example of how the, this is used. So um, let's do that. So area two is going to be over to this side. Just follow me. So Michael's put together all these uh, slides, sideboards. Um, you hit the start at the bottom, it takes you to the first slide. Then the green arrows on the sides of the boards uh, advance or take you back to the previous slides. And so, uh, and students spend hours here doing this. Uh, it's quite amazing. And um, this is all about cell cycles. I don't know if you got into bi biology and these sorts of things, but you know, so it's test questions here. So we go to start. There's uh, the, the talks about the quiz that's coming up. Um, ask you a question, gives you an answer. Um, so how many chromosomes do most of our cells have? 46 is the answer. Um, two scientists that discovered the DNA, who were they? That's the question, there's the answer. And so the students spend a lot of time studying for their quizzes with this. It'd be interesting to know if the students who spent time here do better than the students who didn't. Um, but then you have the thing that the students who spent time here are probably better students to start with. They're taking the time to study and stuff. It's not a random sample. But it's an interesting thing. And, and again, I was very surprised at the level of 
voluntary use of this by his students. And I'm kind of discouraged that I can't get any of our faculty at NOVA who teach A&P to come in here and um, use this site. So have a look at these slides, play around with them a little bit. You'll get a feel for how they work. Um, uh, don't worry about answering the questions, right? But you'll get some feel for how the students use this, how Michael's designed this. It's, it closely follows his textbook, I think, and his, of course, his quizzes and, and tests. And so it might not be as appropriate for another professor's students unless they're using the same sort of textbook. Um, but it's a, a pretty cool way for them to Yeah, I think some some people would be. Um, yeah, some people would be uh, turned off. I, I try not to have faculty come in that much because once they get faculty in here, mostly they get they just realize this is a huge learning curve and they don't want to get involved. But they're not. They will send their students in, and the students, many of them, it's not quite the learning curve for them. Many of them are already active in virtual worlds and things like that, and they understand this better. Um, but it is, yeah. So this is the, um, just looking at the time, we can move on to the next site. But this is uh, widely used. It's a different way to use virtual worlds, provide basically PowerPoint presentations that allows them to study. Um, and there's 14 areas, and each area has six to 10 of these slide boards. And so the number of slides here is in the hundreds. Um, it's it's uh, just really high number of slides uh, up here. And it's, I guess, an easy way for students to access these slides um, rather than trying to go online and download them as a PowerPoint presentation and doing that. So when you're ready, uh, let's go down to uh, the plant science. It's location five on your, uh, on the note card, put that in there. And let's go on down. Okay, I think everybody's here now. Um, we'll get going on this. So this is an example of an interactive activity where the students actually do something besides just looking at slides or looking at note cards um, that they would get with uh, uh, the uh, model of the ge geology model, the Grand Canyon, these note cards to look at and read. And, and the other thing, they're just slide boards to look at. Here they're actually interacting with different things. Um, most of the activity, I think we have 16 interactive activities here on the campus. So most of our activities are in this area. Um, this was built by Symbol, uh, and Symbol is, uh, that's her avatar name. Uh, a very skilled builder, uh, took a lot of scripting to get this stuff to work. Um, we have, and what I found out from that experience is that I have to work very closely um, and to, with the builder, to make sure the science is right, and the builder's working closely with me to make sure that you know, the scripting and stuff like that is actually going to work. So we spent a lot of time together going over this build uh, we have a building platform up in the sky. It's not where open to the public, really. But um, she and I were working up there, getting this right, and so that things would actually work. So what do we have here? We have um, there's a student act handout here too. You can pick that up. It's on the orange poster again, just like for the Grand Canyon. And so what we have here, uh, uh, facing to the activity. So on your left, uh, there's a thing that covers xylem and phloem transport in plants. So what the student does is they come over here and they can click on these. And so uh, let's just do the one for, we're looking at transport in plants here. So we'll look at the for xylem flow. And you'll see the water, it starts to move up from the roots 
out the stem here. It's going to go to the leaf. When it gets to the leaf, it's going to go down the petiole into the leaf, and it's going to start coming out. And things are labeled and stuff like that. And you can kind of see it evaporating from the leaf. And this is xylem flow. It's very directional from the roots to the leaves. On the other side, we get phloem flow. And um, hopefully this works. It might have to be that this is done first. Okay, it looks like it's starting. And phloem is the sugar um, sap within a plant made in the leaf. And it can go to the roots, it can go to wherever sugar is needed. In this case, it's going to the flower. And so uh, we wanted to dispel the fact that it only goes to the roots. It goes up uh, through the flown vessels and into the flower. And there it's used um, to, as a sugar source and mineral source and stuff like that. Uh, but maybe sugar and some hormones and things are in that. And so you're getting this sort of thing going on there. And so students can sit here and you can read this in a textbook, uh, uh, but actually seeing this visually is actually a little better for them. We have uh, slides here. You can see these are slides of tissues of um, plants. There's a slide on the, just above the board there. When clicking on that, we change the tissue types. And so different tissues come up and the students then have to identify those tissues. We have them identified to the, right of the microscope, but then on the left are the ones that they have to compare to figure out what tissues they're looking at. Coming over here, double fertilization. Um, probably most of you don't realize that plants actually do produce sperm and they do, do touch it, uh, the sperm, find the egg. Touching on that, you'll see it, um, it starts off labeling parts of the, of this is a flower parts, the female part of the flower. Very top, we have a pollen grain that landed on top of there um, and started to grow a pollen tube coming out. Um, and you'll see in just a second, it will start up and uh, the labels go away. There's the pollen tube labeled and it's going to start to grow. The pollen tube will grow down to the egg. There's the generator cell that comes in out of the pollen. And it's going to come down and divide to make two sperm. You see it coming down there. Only two sperm coming out of that one pollen grain. And uh, you can see the pollen grain, the pollen tube grows down, the sperm move down, and they're going to go into the ovule of the purple here. The first sperm fertilizes the egg. That's what happened there. And the second sperm goes to the back and joins those polar, two blue polar nuclei to make um, the endosperm, which is going to be the food source for the seed. So this is a visualization of this. And you can see how um, you can read about it, but this students just actually see it here. It makes it a little better for them. And the third thing we have here is just this is the seed uh, being developed. But we're going on from that point. We've got the endosperm, the blue there in the middle, we've got the embryo, the fertilized seed there. And you'll see in the chart on the right kind of shows you the different phases of this. But we're starting to see how this goes in the endosperm, um, which has all the nutrients for the seed once it germinates, uh, takes over, becomes large, um, and then the embryo starts to grow, going to two cell stage, and um, you'll see how it develops. So this was all scripted by a uh, symbol. It's, it's extremely difficult to script this, as you might imagine. Um, it takes a lot of effort, and we worked closely on this just to get it to work. Um, but this is pretty cool. And so students can come in and watch this and get a visualization of how this works. You can see we're going through these different uh, levels here on the poster on the right of that and uh, ending up um, with the final poster there, or the final image. And the students all labeled and stuff like that for them. So they, they zoom in on that and they can get a really good feel for how does this embryo develop into a seed? And that's the, the seed that we've got in there. So we don't have a whole lot more time, um, but let's 
zoom off to the last to the posters and we'll talk about things there and I'll answer just some general questions at the posters. So um, it's the last thing on your note card. Uh, move over to the poster area and um, we'll go ahead and talk about those and you answer any general questions you have there. Let me see who's away from us. Oh, it's like everybody's here. Great. Okay. So um, this is a poster area, obviously. Uh, it's like a big poster presentation. I saw um, early on when I was in Second Life, I think even before I was managing this uh, college campus, I saw another professor do a poster session, and the students stood there, and people came by and asked them questions about their posters. And I initially did that with my honor students. Um, I only had like 10 students. I'd get other faculty to come in uh, who had avatars and they would talk to them and ask them questions. And each student would present their poster and answer questions. But when we got to larger classes, like a 25 student class, you can't really do that. You don't have the time. It's hard to get everybody in at the same time to do that. So what we do now is um, the students make a poster, as you see here, and second, they do this in PowerPoint. They save it as a JPEG, which they send to their professor. Their professor then sends me the JPEGs files, and I bring them into Second Life, and I load them on as textures onto these boards and adjust it and stuff so it's looking okay and people can read it. Um, and so the students are graded on both the design of their poster and the information that they provide. So if you have like a, a pretty poor poster that doesn't give you much information, that doesn't look very nice, it's not fun to look at, we can compare the two posters over here, just showing you two posters to look at. Um, this one to my right is pretty boring, and lots of information. The one to my left is a little bit better. Um, and so students can walk around and say, oh yeah, I should have maybe thought about designing something and making some color. This one is really quite a boring one. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, this is what they do. They learn how to make a poster. They learn a little bit about the design of a poster. Uh, they put the presentation on there. Um, and then they come up with three questions that students should be able to answer if they've read their poster. And these are given to all the students. Every student get a list of these questions for each poster. They don't answer their own poster questions, but they answer those for the other students. And so you'll get students come around looking at these posters and answering those questions after they've read them. So they come in, they learn a lot. Um, and it's, a, yeah, it's a good way to get started on how you publish and stuff like this. And, and if these students go on to do uh, in even senior activities, sometimes they get posters at conferences, definitely graduate work, you get posters at conferences. And so they've had experience making a poster and seeing how that works and, and, and talking about it. Um, walk around, look at some of the posters if you want. Let's see which ones you, you know, get ideas of how some students made really nice ones, some not so nice and some really terrible ones, but you get a good idea for how this works and uh, what the students can learn from this. Um, time's just about up though. So um, let me just see if there's any general questions that people have either in you're all here, so this is nearby chat, and just uh, ask me some questions if you have any. Feel free to come back and look around. Um, it's a very open area. We don't restrict it or anything like that. Um, yes, you're able to return anytime. Like I said, we looked at four of 23 activities. Um, there's a whole lot of activities here that we didn't look at. And um, you can uh, see those activities just by walking around. Those red telephone booths, I see, we see one here. Yeah, there's a red telephone booth down there at the end of the posters there. Those are teleporters. Um, they will take you all over the campus. And so when you come back to look at things, uh, just look at those teleporters. Um, and uh, 
you know, they'll take you around. You can see all the different activities we have here. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of things that could benefit. Uh, we've had uh, Chinese language uh, uh, teachers using this area, um, and they're teaming up with students in China and American students uh, talking to each other. Uh, this, Chinese students are learning English, the American students are learning Chinese, so they kind of work in both languages. Um, we've had some arts uh, people using the campus. Yeah, well, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, happy to have you. You got my, uh, on the screen up there, the classroom, go back to the classroom if you want. There's my contact information if you didn't get it. Um, below that uh, whiteboard in the middle, there's a, uh, link to a, a manual we have on Second Life, Teaching in Second Life. It talks about 15 different ways you can use Second Life um, in education. So go and look at those if you want, be, uh, get, get a hold of that. Um, and now let's keep the discussion going. Thank you. Happy to have people here. Sorry, we don't have, if, it took a, if we had this like three or four hours, we could see a lot more, but we just don't have the time. And if you ever want to come back, or just if you want me to, sh to show you other things, just come back and ask me. I'm always around here, I'm often here. Yeah, maybe part two in June. We'll see. Yeah, uh, and you know, hopefully get some ideas from this, how you can use virtual worlds for your classes and education and stuff like that. It just... I thought I'd be teaching in a classroom like when we first came in. I have never done that. I mean, there's a lot of ways to use it. You just have to walk around and explore and see how people are using it and get ideas. How does that fit for your curriculum and your students and what you want to do and then design it that way? Everybody's welcome. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Again, if you have questions, just let me know, or you can send me an email later, or IM me, um, and we'll get get in touch. Yes, you'll be welcome back. Here you go. Thanks to everybody who came. Nice to, always nice to give a tour. My cat even behaved. He didn't attack my uh, computer. Sustainable is an issue. Um, it's so far we've been able to keep this going since I've been involved since 2010. Um, and it's, you know, how do we, how do we keep it going? Our usage, our number, you know, certain professors have come in and tried things and they've left and others have uh, come in. So you have, the usage doesn't increase so much over time. It's just that we have a lot of things. We have certain people really like it, and they always send students in. So we always get the students up at the A and P area. We always get the poster sessions going. I think a lot of professors prefer to do the posters and have the students do a paper they have to read. It's a lot. It's actually easier for the student for the professor. Um, we get a lot of people using those interactive things like the plant science for labs that are missed because of snow. So we have a lot of snow in spring semester normally in Virginia. So we'll have, we've had once the campus was closed for a whole week, we had 800 students in that year. Um, so it just depends. It's a, sustaining this, you gotta have usage, you gotta have commitment from the administration to keep paying for it. Um, so far we have that, but it's hard to find someone else to take this over, which is kind of what I'm looking for. I'd like to see someone take it over. 
like it's starting to snow now. Maybe we'll get some more students coming in. Yeah, and uh, I have one person at Nova. Uh, I actually live in California. I live 3,000 miles away from the Nova campus. So I don't go on the campus that often. Um, but I have one person there who does help me. She can put these posters up. She can put the JPEGs up here um, and pour them in and, and put the textures on. And that's basically all we have to do right now. Everything else here runs itself. We've made this so it's really maintenance free. Um, usually we don't have any issues here unless we get a griefer or something like that. And that's um, not, that, not that common. We've only had like one or two in my eight years of running this. Yeah, if you have a college that wants online resources, uh, uh, bring them in, have, show them around, show them, or get that uh, manual, and you can look at the different sorts of ways we can use this. Um, he talks about other ways besides the ones we looked at. We only looked at four. There are 15 ways discussed in the manual of using this. If you want to be more quantitative, we have uh, three activities that actually students collect data and interpret that data and put it into tables and stuff. Well, I was trying to get the online people at Nova to use this more to uh, also for um, office hours, because one of the complaints I get from students for hybrid or online classes, not hybrid, but online, is that they never meet the professor. There's, uh, the professor often doesn't respond very quickly to emails and stuff like that. And so they can actually um, come in and have an office hour where they have more of a personal interaction. Yeah, Tagline, we actually have, well, there, there are experiments that are set up where the students collect data, yeah, and interpret that data. We have a couple over in the cell area with photosynthesis and cellular respiration. We have some on natural selection. We have a forest. You see the forest just behind the posters there behind you. Um, that forest is an ecology activity where they uh, figure out relative abundance, relative density, and stuff like that for the forest. Um, so there's, there's a, we have some activities where students actually collect data and interpret that data. Yeah, the, the online classes, there's a big social aspect to um, you even get that with the community college system where students don't live on campus normally and they go and like a job and they go back to home or something. So it's, you don't get that on don't get that, that experience that you would have living in a dorm on a campus, but the, high, the online camp, uh, classes is, is really amazing that you, you, you don't see other students, you don't see the professor, and there's no really personal interaction. So I think it's uh, second life can give you that personal interaction, even though it's a, online class. Any more questions that we have to answer? Just, you have my email, um, you have my IM, just dodge three beards. Um, I'm happy to talk to people about this. Thank you, everybody. This stuff is my passion, so I'm happy to talk about it. And feel free to come back and look at the other things, things we didn't get to talk about. Look around the campus. Um, you're always welcome. It's a very open campus. Handouts are associated with most of the activities. You can see the handouts and stuff. We made a lot of mistakes. We tried to fix them. We learned a lot of how do you, you teach and do students and get activities working in a college situation in Second Life. And most of that information is available in the manual. So get a, get a copy of that if you want.
yes, feel free to head out. I think we're done. Um, and uh, feel free to walk around and look at things too, if you want. You can do that now, you can do it later. I don't know what your times are like, but we're a very open campus. So just come anytime you want and look around. Okay, Mike, thank you for filming that. Stay warm. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Cass. Enjoy your weekend, everybody.